Pro Football. Central Radio Exclusive. Exclusive. National champion and Florida State University's head football coach Jimbo Fisher and wife Candy Fisher discovered their younger son Ethan was diagnosed with Fanconi anemia in 2011. Springing into action, they immediately founded the Kids First Fund to raise national awareness, improve treatment options, and help fund research. In just two years, Kids First Fund donated more than $1.8 million to the University of Minnesota Amplatz Children's Hospital, the largest treatment center for FA patients in the country. The goal is to ultimately find a cure for F.A., and we want your help. Visit right now, www.kidsfirstfund.com. That's K-I-D-Z, the number one, S-T, fund.com, to make a contribution and learn more about the cause. Register to become a bone marrow donor at bethematch.org. Stay in the know by following at Kids First Fund on Twitter and like them at facebook.com slash kidsfirstfund. Football Central Radio, we are back, and we have one of the standout rookie stars of the Redskins-Patriots game, kicker from Arkansas, Zach Hawker. Zach, how are you doing today, my friend? Doing great, doing great. Thank you guys for having me. Walk me through the nerves from last night going into it. You're playing the New England Patriots, one of the best teams in football. You have a... You're finally putting on a pro emblem, playing for the Redskins. Walk me through the nerves. How did you feel last night? Well, you know, honestly, last night, um, you know, I was a lot more calm than what I uh, in- anticipated, and um, you know, just approaching approaching that game last night like it like it was anything else, like it was you know a college game and uh, in favor of Arkansas, or whether you know it was an NFL game, I was going to approach the exact same way and. I knew that I was there for a reason and um, just wanted to, to uh, perform well, and luckily enough, everything went went okay. Do you feel like because you are a because you kick for a living that being in a pressure point is good for you? You know, playing for Arkansas, the game's on the line. It's up to you. Do you think that helps playing that position? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, playing in the SEC, um, I feel like really molded me as far as uh, situational stuff, game winning field goals, um, pressure field goals, you know, a lot of those environments that you have to play when you go to LSU and Alabama and Texas A&M, those aren't easy environments to play in. Um, you know, nonetheless, I feel like it's definitely helped, helped mold me as a player um, and and mentally um, when, those, when those situations come around. Do you have anything on your iPod right now that is the go-to the music to hype you up like before a game? <laughs> Go to musical. I like I like any kind of genre really. It's just whatever whatever is hot at the time, whatever is out. You know, I'm a I'm a huge country fan. Um, you know, sometimes hip hop, rap, that kind of stuff. But whatever is out, that's what I'm on my iPod, and that's what I'm gonna do before the game. It's just kind of a mix of everything. Um, you know, just kind of get you ready to uh, to, to take. take Let's talk about the rookie hazing, the haircut. I have to bring the haircut up. Dude, yeah. Who had the idea in the first place? Who was the barber? And you won a lot of teammates over doing it, obviously. The the teammates I talked to love the fact that you were completely okay with them cutting your hair. Um, I'm looking at a photo of the haircut now. Please tell the listeners the whole process. How did it become into an idea? Well, building up uh, the camp, uh, you know, our... our director of, of player engagement uh he's in charge of all the rookies and um you know he even mentioned it several weeks in a row that you know rookie skits are coming up rookie nights coming up you have to see in front of the team or i got some front of the team you have to get your hair cut you know etc and um you know when i talked it over with him and some of the guys the haircut kept on popping up nobody had done it yet uh is is as far as all the rookie skits went and so i just stepped up to the plate and let uh you know kai forbath our other kicker and nick Sunberg. uh our D snapper kind of kind of take over on it. Kai was the one who actually cut it in front of the team, and um, you know they put four or five sheets of paper up on the overhead with uh, all kinds of hideous haircuts, and the whole entire team voted on that one. Which I mean, if you're looking at the picture, you can see it too pretty. And so uh, 
they just let me have it right then and there. And um, I kept it for the first couple of days of camp. Um, and, uh, you know, I was originally supposed to keep it throughout the game, um, throughout the first week. But um, just after all the attention that it kind of got uh, day after day, and you know, I didn't want to, you know, to take the hating thing to the next level because it was also my decision. They weren't up there forcing me to do anything. It was all in good fun and to have a with the team and uh, with all the fans. And when it kind of took that, you know, there was a sports episode on it and, you know, a write-up about it, just about, you know, rookie hazing. You know, and it was all in good fun, but I just didn't want that hazing spotlight on our team, on our organization. And, um, so I talked to there with some of the vets and, and, and some of the coaches and we thought that it would be best to shave it. But nonetheless, we still got a good laugh out of it. And, hazing. Um, and I think our, our fan base did too. Hazing gets a bad name. If we're having fun and we're not hurting anybody's feelings, then it's a good thing, you know, because we're just having a good right. time. Uh, the word that I got is there was a skit that was supposed to be performed, but you came up blank. You had no idea. Is that accurate? No, oh, and, that, and that's what got, got, got posted. It's, it, it, it's rookie night. So um, that's anything to entertain the veterans. You know, if you get up there and you get booed off stage, you know, the next week you're going to be back up there. And so it had nothing to do with a skit was supposed to be performed and Zach didn't have his stuff memorized and Zach didn't have it done until he cut his hair. You know, so it's was totally forcing to do it. It was, you know, we were, we were going into it, um, you know, days in advance, knowing that I was going to get my hair cut. It was just him to entertain the guys. And I thought that, you know, whenever the haircut I did came up, you know, I can't I can't get booed off stage and somebody shaving my head looking like that. And so I knew that once I went up there and paid my dues, um, you know, my my turn was going to be done and get a couple laughs out of the team and that uh, and then go about the way. Now there were other skits on um, that the guys that I've been put on for the team that were funny as well. But um, you know, I knew days in advance I was going to go up there and get and get my hair cut and that's what we did. So the goal of this interview is to get your Twitter followers up. Follow them on Twitter, ZHawker18. After last night's stellar performance, the 275 followers better blow up soon, correct? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the more followers, the better. You know, I, I feel like nowadays a lot of guys take a lot of pride in that. But, um, you know, I mean, you can go on there and see, and see the haircut for yourself. If you haven't seen it, it is not... It is not the best looking thing in the world, but you know all all the people listening will will I, I think agree that um, you can definitely get a couple of laughs out of that. As now far. the haircut's essentially uh, an arrow that points down to your face. Now throw us a few more ideas they had out there, and if you were dreading anything that they came up with that was being voted upon. That one, that one that I got, honestly, I was hoping that I was going to get. Um, there's another one up there that, that was the, uh, the Tim Tebow. If y'all can remember that from a couple years ago mm -hmm. where he had kind of like the facial chin strap and they just shaved like a huge bald spot on top of his head to where his hair was like hanging down over his face. They just had a, you know, a huge bald spot in the center of his head. Um, I did not want that one. Um, there's another one, uh, you know, there's like zigzags and just really splotchy spots everywhere that just look just really nasty. And I didn't want that one either. So they had, I think there, there's a couple more in there that were pretty hideous. I can't really remember what it was. But the one that I got, um, the time in the moment didn't seem too bad. And then uh, when I looked in the mirror, you know, a minute after they uh, they got done with it, it was, it was just as nasty as the other one. So... At the end of the day, I think that it was right there with them, um, but it was still fun, fun thing to do. I want to hear about the kicking battle. To be the kicker of this roster, can you walk me through the competition between you and Kai? Is it is it friendly? Is it fun? Is it okay? I have to outdo what he does. Is it competitive? How is well, this competition? Kai Kai is a guy that I that I really do respect. Um, he's a he's a veteran. You know, he's been in the league for several years and he's done nothing but be successful at this level. And so. I got drafted to come in and compete for the job, and um, you know, and I understand that it is a competition at the end of the day. And Kyle and I are both battling for the same spot, but at the same time, we have a friendship there that you know we're out to hunt each other. You know, and we're 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 roommates here at camp. We were, you know, I mean, he's he's done a great job, kind of taking me under under his wing and um, showing me the ropes as far as 
uh, how you carry yourself in the NFL, you know, how, how you stay healthy and, um, you know, practice schedule, stuff like that. And um, he, 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 he's taken me out in some of the city. So it's, there's absolutely no, no hard, hard feelings there. Um, you know, we're out to get each other. But at, at the end of the day, um, you know, we do understand that, it, that, that it's a competition. It's not a typical competition that where we, you know, we want each other to go out and mess up, if, if, if you will. But, um, you know, we're there to help each other out and uh, critique each other. Um, but at the end of the day, we do understand what, what's going on. We just want to, you know, we want to do the hardest decision possible. Um, for our coaching staff, and that might sound weird because I know a lot of guys come in and they fight for that job and they don't get along too well. With Kai and I had a great uh, relationship off the field, and um, you know we we want to do not, nothing but make each other better. So um, you know, nonetheless, I want to win this job and I want to be the kicker for the Redskins. But um, you know, we're trying to make it a hard decision on the coaching staff. You have the good advantage of playing with a first-year head coach in Jay Gruden. How is he like as a head coach? Uh, we're all on the same page here because this is his first year as a head coach, which is a good advantage for you, like I just said. How would you assess playing for Gruden as opposed to playing for a college coach? Well, Coach Gruden, you know, there's a lot of differences uh, when you look at uh, college ball to pro ball. And uh, Coach Gruden, you know, I mean, he's, he's the only coach that, I, that I've been under, obviously, but... Um, in the league, you understand that it's all on you. You know, the coaches can lay back and have a good time with you, but you have to understand that it's all your responsibility to do what you have to do to perform, stay healthy, um, you know, stay out of trouble off the field. You know, you you don't get advice in the uh, in the meeting rooms or, you know, little seminars every night teaching you, you know, how to be an NFL player. Um, and that's all I like about Coach Gruden is that he, uh, he he's a great – head coach as far as personality and having that that, that, that that personal relationship with his players but at the same time he has high expectations for you and uh you know kind of let you do do your own thing as long as you're uh, you're staying healthy you're staying out of trouble and uh you know he, he more than anything he just wants you to enjoy the game and uh you know from from what i've heard from from some of the veterans um compared to uh, you know older coaching staff he's done a great job coming in and making the guys just feel welcome and feel at home, and uh, and I've and I felt no no different. Who's the main veteran in the locker room that you have had a lot of help with, uh, with like going to for some advice? Well, you know, we have several uh, veterans on our team that have helped me out. Me being a kicker, you know, I I stick pretty close to the specialist unit. Nick Sunberg has has been he he's going into his sixth season um, here with the skin, so he's a guy that I've that I've gone to a lot. Um, as far as advice at the specialist position, there's several other guys on the team, um, great leaders. You know, you have RG3 and DY and, you know, all, all, all these guys that have been around that have, you know, been nothing but encouraging and accepting to all the younger guys. So um, I've had, you know, wor- words of advice from, 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 from all those guys and, um, you know, can't, can't really thank them enough for helping me mold uh, to this new, this new level. Zach Hawker, 27 and 39 yard field goal. Did pretty well. Let's talk about the open field tackle. How big were your eyes when you seen it? You said to yourself, okay, this is it. This is me versus them. Walk us through the tackle. Well, starting off, I, I, I didn't want to, uh, to bring it out. You know, my first, my first touchback, or I guess my first kickoff was a touchback, and that's how I was striving for, um, you know, the rest of the game. And uh, my second. My second kickoff had had some pretty good hang time, so on on that last kickoff that I got, you know, I wanted to to kind of end the night on a touchback, and um, I hit it eight D. So I'm like, going, okay, you know, this guy's not going to bring it out. And he brought it out, and the hole was, you know, almost as wide as the field. So it was <laughs> he just straight up the middle on me, and it was one of those moments to where, you know, you just kind of had to had to break down and watch him, and uh, you know, just kind of let instinct take over and. Um, you know, he came out the middle, and I just kind of held my ground and uh, got him down. I'm very thankful for that just because, you know, later in my career, if, you know, if there's an open field situation and you, and you have to, you know, bring the guy down, uh, you know, it's it's old news now. And, um, you know, my, as far as confidence, uh, it did it, it nothing but, but boost that for the future. Zach Rocker, the only kicker drafted 
in this past year's NFL draft. How does that feel hearing that? That you, out of everybody else, you were the only kicker drafted in the 2014 draft in the seventh round. And how is that for confidence and how is that for pressure? Well, what a lot of people don't understand is there was actually one more kicker taken right behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think, you know, some people overlooked that just because I was, I was the first one taken. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was actually the very next pick. Um, there's another kicker taken, a freeze who went to uh, Detroit. Mm-hmm. But not, nonetheless, getting drafted as a kicker, um, you know, that's a huge accomplishment in itself. And I take great great pride in that. And I understand that there's a, a you know, responsibility that comes with it. You know, if you're fortunate enough to be drafted as a kicker, um, you know, you don't take that for granted at all. And uh, you approach the situation. Um, you know, just like you're you're an undrafted free agent as far as keeping a level head, um, but when you're drafted, you know you're, you're you're put in a position to come in and uh, and and to and to win the job. And um, you know, my 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 confidence um, getting drafted has been nothing but boosted. Uh, you know, coming into the league, and uh, so far things are going smoothly and. I'm just hoping to make a roster spot um, this upcoming season. Let everybody know how to find you on Twitter, if you have an Instagram, and if there's anything else you want to plug. Um, everything social media is the Hawker 18, um, all all lowercase. You can see, uh, you know, my my feed going through camp and um, pictures going through camp. You can see that hideous haircut. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on that uh, that you can check out. But just appreciate you guys having me and. Um, you know, for all the fans out there, hopefully we can make the squad next year and, um, you know, make an impact on the team.